Hello, and welcome to another Shakespeare for Dummies video. In this video, we will be talking about The Tempest, one of Shakespeare's most well-known plays. The Tempest is one of the last plays written by Shakespeare, and it was published sometime in 1610 or 1611. The Tempest is a tale of betrayal and a subsequent plot to enact revenge. In addition, Shakespeare also delves into the world of the supernatural. In The Tempest, the concept of magic is heavily explored, making The Tempest one of Shakespeare's most magical plays. Before we begin, we will first start with a short introduction to William Shakespeare. Shakespeare was born in late April of 1564 in Stratford-upon-Avon in England. His exact date of birth is unknown, however, he was baptized on April 26th of 1564, and scholars point to April 23rd as Shakespeare's most probable date of birth. His parents were John Shakespeare, who was a glove maker and a high-ranking councilman, and Mary Arden, who was the daughter of wealthy farmers. He was John and Mary's third child, but William's older two siblings, both of which were girls, did not survive infancy, making William their eldest living child. During Shakespeare's childhood, he is assumed to have attended the local grammar school in Stratford-upon-Avon, but this cannot be confirmed as the records have long been lost. At the age of 18, Shakespeare married Anne Hathaway, who was 26 years old, in 1582. Shakespeare and Anne Hathaway had three children. Their daughter Susanna was born in 1583 and twins Hamnet and Judith were born in 1585. Unfortunately, Hamnet Shakespeare, who would be the only son of William and Anne Hathaway, passed away at the age of 11 from unknown causes, and this affected Shakespeare greatly. The first surviving mention of Shakespeare as a playwright was in 1592. However, this was a direct attack on Shakespeare by a prominent and established playwright who mocked Shakespeare's early work publicly. Over the next several years, Shakespeare's fame and popularity grew, and he became a very prominent figure in the playwright community, joining the Lord Chamberlain's Men, which was a successful English playwright and acting community, and this helped Shakespeare amass significant amounts of wealth. Shakespeare would go on with the Lord Chamberlain's Men, to be one of the most successful playwrights of the time period, writing a total of 37 plays. William Shakespeare passed away on April 23, 1616, which was also quite possibly his 52nd birthday. Now that the background knowledge on Shakespeare's life has been clarified, let's get into the play of the day, which is The Tempest. The Tempest is one of the last 37 plays attributed to Shakespeare and was written sometime in 1610 or 1611. The first recorded performance of The Tempest occurred in front of King James I of England on November 1st of 1611. The Tempest begins with a vessel carrying Alonso, who is the King of Naples, and Antonio, the current Duke of Milan, as well as others, back to their kingdoms following a wedding. They encounter harsh weather at sea, also known as a tempest, and the storm was created via magic by Prospero, who was vengeful, as his throne as the prior Duke of Milan was stolen from him by his brother Antonio twelve years prior. Following this betrayal, Prospero escaped to an island with his daughter Miranda and has remained there ever since. Keeping Prospero and Miranda company on the island was Caliban, who was a savage creature enslaved to Prospero, and Ariel, a spirit bound by magic to serve Prospero. The storm created by Prospero caused the men aboard the ship to abandon, and they all landed on Prospero's island. Following this, Prospero, as well as Ariel the spirit, used magic against the men as penance for their treachery 12 years ago. In addition to this, Miranda, daughter of Prospero, meets Ferdinand, the son of Alonso, who was with the men on the ship. The two quickly fall in love, and Ferdinand proposes their marriage to one another. 
The scene I will be performing is from Act 5, Scene 1 of The Tempest. In this scene, Prospero decided to give up practicing magic, breaking his staff, and drowning his magic texts in the sea. Ye elves of hills, brooks, standing lakes, and groves, and ye that on the sands with printless foot, do chase the ebbing Neptune, and do fly him when he comes back, you demi-puppets that by moonshine do the green, sour ringlets make, whereof the ew not bites, and you whose pastime is to make midnight mushrumps that rejoice to hear the solemn curfew by whose aid Weak masters, though ye be, I have bedimmed the noontide sun, called forth the mutinous winds, and twixt the green sea and the azured vault, and set roaring war to the dread rattling thunder, have I given fire, and rifted Jove's stout oak with his own bolt, the strong-based promontory have I made shake, and by spurs plucked up the pine and cedar. Graves at my command have waked their sleepers, oped and let forth by my so potent art. But this rough magic I must abjure, when, when I have required some heavenly music, which even now I do, to work mine and upon their airy senses that this airy charm is for, I shall break my staff, bury it certain fathoms in the earth, and deeper than did ever plummet sound, I'll drown. Following Prospero's renouncement of magic, Ariel leads the party of men to Prospero. Instead of harming them and obtaining his retribution, Prospero instead greets the men warmly. Prospero is then reinstated as the Duke of Milan and all prior transgressions are forgiven. Prospero then reveals Ferdinand and Miranda, who are now engaged. Alonso and the rest of the men are ecstatic and welcome the new couple with open arms. After this, the entire group celebrates on the island. Magically, the ship that was thought to be lost to the earlier tempest is safely harbored nearby. That night, Prospero tells the story of the last 12 years he had spent in exile. They plan to sail for Naples the next morning. Prospero, as a final renouncement of his previous magical power, frees Caliban and Ariel as the last act of giving up his ties to magic. Before he does, he asks Ariel to provide the group with a safe passage back to Milan. The previous section was important because Prospero had a serious change of heart, deciding to give up his prior lifestyle and return to the way things were before he lost his throne and was exiled. Prospero had spent the previous 12 years practicing and perfecting the magical arts, and he chose to instead give them up to live out the rest of his life the way it was before. His daughter is now engaged to the son of the king of Naples, and because of this, he chose to be conciliatory towards the men, if not for himself, then for the sake of Miranda. Prospero had regained his throne, ending this chapter of his life. According to Lawrence E. Bowling, who is a professor at the University of Kentucky, The Tempest at First Glance just appears to be another romantic play written by Shakespeare. However, according to Bowling, the Tempest is instead, as I quote, a reflection of Renaissance ideals as well as one of Shakespeare's most significant commentaries upon the conduct of real human beings. Bowling contends that the main theme of The Tempest is the theme of natural order. Breaking it down, what Bowling is saying is that Prospero 
losing his throne and his enslavement of Caliban and Ariel, as well as Antonio holding the title of Duke of Milan over Prospero, was an upset to the natural order. Bowling states that the final act of the play, where all is forgiven and returns to how it was 12 years prior, is the restoration of this natural order. In my own opinion, I believe that The Tempest is a very interesting play. It was also not very hard to read, which made it more enjoyable. I enjoyed The Tempest much more than Romeo and Juliet, which I loathed, but Macbeth was more interesting to me than The Tempest. I didn't hate reading The Tempest, but it just didn't quite hit the mark for me. It quite possibly would be more interesting to me if I saw a live theatrical performance of The Tempest. However, I really don't foresee that in my future. Thanks for watching this edition of Shakespeare for Dummies, and I hope to see you all back here again next episode.